my name is Martin Matuska. I'm a developer of the FreeBSD operating system focusing mainly on ZFS. But at the same time, I'm a system administrator of several dozens of servers. And um, what I will be talking about today is one of the projects I started. And the name of it is MFSBSD. I will explain what is it about and what can it do. So let's take a look. So at first, of course, I will tell you what is MFSBSD and how you can use it. And I will also give a live, a live demonstration in a virtual environment of booting such an installed image, also creating an installed image because we have internet access. So I will show that on my, one of my hosts. And that's, that's really easy. And uh, it can be used for a great variety of pur purposes. So let's start with a very cheap definition of MFSBSD. So actually MFSBSD itself is just a set of scripts controlled by one single make file that creates a memory resident FreeBSD installation. So that completely runs in RAM. So no, nothing is read from disks afterwards. So when you boot MFSBSD, when it's loaded, when the kernel starts booting, you can remove the drive it is booting from. So you can like remove the USB stick and pull it away or anything. You don't need the source anymore because everything is already in memory. Good, uh, let's take a look at the history. So at the, at the very beginning, why did I start with this project at all? So MFSBSD originates from the Deep Penguin Editor project by Colin Fersival. What was this? Uh, many years ago, it's like already nine years ago, uh, the first dedicated server providers, all the, 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 the dedicated server business was growing. Uh, providers have been selling dedicated servers and they have been selling these servers with pre-installed Linux. The problem was there was like no remote management of these servers. So there was like no remote console or rescue system. There was nothing like that. Even if it was, it was only Linux based. And what we, what Colin wanted that time is some, some, somehow some way to install FreeBSD on these servers from Linux. Yeah, so that was, that was actually the, the original idea of this project. And MFSBSD is still capable of doing this. So you can create an image, log in into a Linux system, and simply overwrite the hard drive you are running from. Yes, even if it's running from this hard drive, you can overwrite it with this image reboot and, 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 and get into a running BSD system. So simply replace the installed systems from, from within it. Uh, the MFS VSD project started in 2007. Uh, the problem was the Penguin Nator was not developed anymore. Afterwards, there was a 2.0 version released but uh, to support higher FreeBSD versions. But the problem was it was designed for FreeBSD 4 and it didn't work well with FreeBSD 6, starting with FreeBSD 6. So in 2007, as I started, at the very first concept, I have been using GeoMusip to save space so that the image shrinks and uh, then decompresses in memory. And today we have already an XZ compressed image in FreeBSD 9.0. So, uh, what features do we have in MFSBSD? Why, why, why is it interesting? So, first of all, it runs completely from memory. Uh, then there is a set of scripts that is, makes, makes your life easier. So, there is by standard defined an auto DHCP network uh, setup for all network interfaces that are found. So automatically, if you, you, everybody who builds his own image, of course, can change almost everything. So you can like change your configuration stuff and so on. You can say, I want pre-configured network interfaces and stuff like that. Um, you can add additional user packages. That means that you have a full base installation, on no, not full, it's stripped actually, because there is no tool chain, no GCC and stuff like that it, to keep it small. Um, you can add additional user packages like editors, network debugging tools and stuff like that. And it's highly customizable. That means that you can like 
it, it's very easy to tweak. If, if you know how to work with make files and stuff like that, or, or just make add prepare packages, you can simply modify this whole installation. It's very simply. What's new? Uh, Ed Shotan is using this also in his systems, and he has written a small script that's called root hack. The purpose of root hack is actually to replace the init of FreeBSD. So uh, the idea is the original MFS BSD, like uh, half a year ago, uh, doesn't have root hack. That means you boot a system that's readable, but you as there is packed on this system and it has to be decompressed in another mount. With, with, with root hack, uh, there is no init, so the, what init actually does, it extracts a compressed file, makes a CH root in this file, and starts in it inside. The main advantage is the whole extraction happens into a TMPFS file system, so you have like as much free space as your memory has, and uh, you can do then re really anything inside. You can like replace or change or whatever, so it's, it's, you have complete freedom. That's, that's why this route is very interesting, and that's why I have, I have uh, incorporated it into MFS BSD. So how it is, what about the availab availability of it? Uh, you can download already pre-compiled ISO images from mfsbsd.vx.sk. Uh, there are two editions, standard edition and special edition. Standard edition is just a simple FreeBSD installation. Uh, of course, again, as I told, it's stripped. That means there are parts of it removed to keep it small. Mainly the tow chain GCC in FreeBSD 9, it's C-Lang is removed. Um, there are two editions. The second edition, the special edition, also contains one special file that has a full FreeBSD installation compressed. Uh, with this special edition, you can completely install a FreeBSD uh, deployment. So you can, you can deploy FreeBSD on a machine. With, it, it, it equals to using sysinstall or stuff like, or, 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 the, new, or the new VCBSD installer. Um, the source code is easily custom, and uh, main point, you can make a full root FreeBSD install with it. That means it, the whole FreeBSD system is only on uh, full, root, full ZFS, so it's a ZF, root on ZFS, so the whole system is on ZFS. There is like no UFS partition to start it, so it's completely located on ZFS. It can be installed on mirrors or RAID Z drives, and there are scripts that make it easier. So, uh, there are three main use cases for MFS BSD I know. The first one is rescue system, so that you have a system that loads from memory and uh, you can use it to repair damaged stuff. Then you have, we have a FreeBSD installation, as I told uh, now, and we have diskless network boot. That means it can be also used via PXE on a network. So let's see about the rescue system. So first of all, you can repair misconfigured or damaged systems. The rescue system can be booted from the main drive, from a partition, or from a CD-ROM, or from a USB stick, whatever. Uh, you can modify boot disk drives. So normally, if you have a standard FreeBSD installation, you are unable to change the disk drives you have booted from because they are opened. Uh, you can make change again to root ZFS pools. That's also not possible if you are on a live system. You first have to change a root pool, reboot, and then modify the original pool. Uh, and uh, it's used by some dedicated server providers. The I know is the company Hetzner in Germany. They, they are already using this system for, for their FreeBSD support. But what I have heard, they're not the only one. So the second uh, second use is FreeBSD installation. Um, you need a special edition to do this. So actually, if you want to install from the distribution, if you want to install from network, you don't need anything. You could just boot from it, run sysinstall, and install from an FTP server like like you are used to. Uh, with this special edition, so you have a special tar file which you can install FreeBSD with. with. The advantage is you just, you just can use deployed scripts for ZFS installing that make it very easy. ZFS install and destroy Geom to clean Geom drives. And the, um, 
the, the tar file can be used in for any purpose. That means you can create the, your disks yourself, for example, just GPT partitioning and one UFS partition, and you just extract it there and then just put the system and it works. Of course, you have to also set the boot record, but that's everything you have to do. There, is no, there are no other needs. So the third use case is diskless network boot. It works with PXE boot and PXE Linux. Um, uh, I personally recommend that you use the TFTP enabled boot roller. Otherwise, you have you need to set up NFS as well. So for me, it's better that I have only TFTP that delivers all the main files for um, all the main files for MFSBSD it needs, and then it simply boots and you can run it. Otherwise, if you have to add the standard bootloader, it, it just loads the loader from TFTP and the loader looks in NFS, in NFS for, the, for the kernel and, and the NFS root image. And that's in, in, in my point, uh, that's, that's not optimal. That's, that's what the standard loader does. So to make a TFTP enabled loader, you have to recompile it with a flag. Okay, so let's move on to a live demonstration of this. So I have prepared here a virtual box image and as we can see, I have linked here a CD-ROM that contains the uh, special edition release ISO data, this one. And we'll start it right now. Is it visible? Okay, yeah. So now what is happening, uh, we are loading the kernel from the MFS BSD CD-ROM. The kernel is now loaded and now we are loading MFS root. MFS root is a special image that's loaded into the MFS at the, at the boot time. This is, this is the latest MFS BSD 9.0, FreeBSD 9.0 edition with root hack. So actually we have a TMPFS, the full whole system running from one TMFF, TMPFS mount. We have the standard BST, so the menus, option menus can be used. Of course, if you want to hack it, you can customize it, remove this BST, whatever, just, just skip, skip all these steps to make the boot process faster. Good, then we will see the simple boot of a standard release kernel. That's the very very stock generic kernel. There are no customization customizations in the kernel. So it's the generic kernel that comes with FreeBSD. And uh, what I have done, uh, this kernel loads TMPFS afterwards. So I have made a little modification to add Shoten's root hack and I load TMPFS to, to have it now. So what we have now, uh, this system is now running, you have an SSHD daemon and we are online. The standard password is MFS root. You can of course change your password if you create your very own image. So let's take a look what do we have here. As you can see, to explain how this root hack stuff works. So the very, very original mount is the dev MD0, as you can see. And in, the, in this MD0, there is only this root.txz file where the whole root is compressed and this fake init. This fake init is actually this root hack. Fake init creates RW directory, or it might be already in the image, extracts the contents of root.txz, mounts the dev file system inside and makes a ch root. So now we are located in the ch root, so in the re directory, and uh, and it's it's a tmpfs. So the the whole installation is inside. The standard ISO has also some set of packages pre-installed. That's my choice of packages for for such a rescue system. Of course, if you want a customized version, you can pick your very own own. Okay. Uh, uh, there is also network support from the start here in VirtualBox, but you can run it on, on any system. Uh, by now, I support only AMD64 and E386 systems. I have not tried it on ARM yet, or MIPS or something like that, but I don't know if it's uh, possible at all. But uh, I have not tried and I'm also not developing it. I don't have the resources and hardware. So, uh, 
that's how it looks when it's running. Now, what do we have? Uh, we have here no no geom drives inside. But when we look, we have a virtual disk at a zero with four gigabytes. And now I have the special special edition of MFSBSD, and I want to install FreeBSD inside of this drive from this special edition. So what do I have to do? I have to mount. Mount the CD-ROM, where you can see the contents of the CD-ROM is uh, this special release file called X XZ compressed. Here it's 75 megabytes, 74 megabytes. Then you have this MFS root, so that's the actual real MFS BSD, and and boot contains the kernel and maybe some modules that have, that are added into it. Now. Uh, we use the magic ZFS install script that is also part of MFS BSD. If you just press enter, then we have here a small help. If I do it like this, it's a larger help. Um, it takes some flags and you can tell to it what drive or drives or mirror or whatever you want to install your FreeBSD to. So now I will tell him that I am installing uh, FreeBSD from this file into 8ADA0 disk drive. There is a standard set of partitions that will be pre-created. I'm now creating no swap partitions. If you want a swap partition additionally, then you have to specify it in the command line. That's also part of the flag. So I now, now I press enter and it creates everything. It installs FreeBSD, creates all the partitions necessary. And then we can take a look if the system boots. <laughs> it's a, it will be a full. Of course, the name of the pool, like here it is, tank, can be also specified from from command line. There are quite a lot of options. Yeah, this notebook is only a single core, so <laughs> it takes some time. And FreeBSD nine isn't the smallest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now everything has been done. If you take a look, we have we have here these three standard partitions, and um, I am now going to unmount the CD-ROM and reboot the system. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So. Okay, so I'm now rebooting the system and there is no CD-ROM attached anymore, so it should be booting from the hard drive. So now we are booting from the hard drive. It's the standard GPT-ZFS boot with the loader. So it will now load the kernel and we will have a full FreeBSD installation as found on the 9.0 CD-ROM. Then, then later I will also very shortly show you how to create your very own images or just modify the scripts or how does the building process look like because there are two, two parts of users. One part of users just uses the pre-created images to do anything and there is a second part of users sales. Hey, well, I want to customize it for my very, very own use and they create the images themselves. But as you can see, we are already booting from the hard drive. It's a full ZFS install of, of FreeBSD and uh, it will be a complete clean installation as everybody who ever installed FreeBSD is used to. It's the stock generic kernel inside. Of course, if you are creating your own image, you can pick your very own kernel. So, as you can see, nothing is set. No host name, nothing. So it's a completely clean install with an empty rc.conf. So there is like nothing, nothing inside. No root password, standard MOTD. So it's a complete installation of FreeBSD, like like the very default install, but on ZFS. So you have a complete ZFS setup on the root. So this is the tank. 
and you can do everything what you can do with ZFS with this. Like a recursive snapshot of, of the whole of the whole pool, then you can return to these snapshots and so on. Okay. Power of is just a sim link created recently. <laughs> you cannot find it at 8.2. You know, just to make the Linux people happier. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at the at the creation of this. So, what do we have here? Uh, this is this is such a standard set you can download from JIT of the source code. We have the make file that does the, does the most magic. Then part of it is in scripts, part of it is in the tools, and configuration is in conf. You have like sample files for, you can define their authorized keys, interfaces, loader, rcconf, resolveconf, or whatever. And uh, then we have the packages. So there are like some user packages inside already prepared. I create my packages in TXE since I, since I have introduced this into our package tools. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the basic part, and then there is this TMP that shouldn't be there, so I make it clean. It's, it should be empty, okay? And in tools, there are like scripts of ZFS install. We have this prune list. That's a list of all binaries and everything that is stripped from the basic installation. So you can find everything that gets deleted here inside, in this prune list. So again, if you want to customize this, you simply Add stuff inside or remove stuff from this file, and you can have your very custom, custom uh, set of uh, MFS BSD. Okay, now the creation. Uh, the, the the simplest way is just to make make ISO, but first we have to look in the make file. So the uh, by standard it installs from the CD-ROM and from the nine series and upwards CD-ROM. So if we just type make ISO, then it will install MFS BSD from a CD-ROM that's mounted. In, in this path. If it cannot find it, of course, it exits with an error. But there are also ways to make a custom installation of your very own world you have built, or kernel. You can let MFS BSD build it, or you can build it yourself. It's, it's very customizable, just, just adding flags, uh, definition flags to make file. So the script is several pages long. So it isn't that small, but of course, smaller than our ports. Management. <laughs> Good. Uh, so let's take a look. If I think uh, now in CD-ROM, I have a mounted 9.0 AMD64 release, and now I want to create a MFS BSD installation. And I want to do it, let's see, with root head or without root hack. Here, uh, first for root hack, you have to specify. Uh, Compiled file, otherwise it won't build with root hack. The distribution files on the uh, website, so the ISO images are with root hack. But now let's do one without root hack. So if I, I do only make ISO, that's everything, and now the whole build process starts. So first of all, from the CD-ROM, the base and kernel are extracted, and uh, that's that's the first step. Takes some time. And then it goes faster. Uh, the files in the prune list are removed. Uh, configuration scripts and files are installed. SSH host keys are generated. Again, you can skip this step, use your own keys, depends. Uh, user packages are copied, installed, and what you see now, the, the whole system, the user system is being compressed with, uh, with, with XE. So the image an image was created, and the exe compression takes some time. And uh, if you use root hack, then the whole system is compressed, not only USR. Now an MFS root is created using this uh, using this uh, USR, and voila, ISO image is ready with 30 megabytes. This image is already bootable, so you can already use it anywhere. Uh, what I was doing an ISO image, if I tell him make an IMG, then uh, I guess 
it's just make, yeah. Just make creates an image file, yeah, make image is the name, or just make, that creates an image file. This image file can be burned to a USB stick directly with DD. You just make DD, input this file, output USB stick. Then you have a bootable USB stick with MFSBSD. Or you can use it on a installed Linux system just to override your main hard drive. <laughs> but it works, really. I have, I have done it in the past. That's, that's the way I had my first FreeBSD dedicated servers in Germany. Okay, uh, the last option, the output you can have is a simple tar file, uh, which you can then do whatever you want with. You can extract it. Uh, for example, if you create a uh, PXE boot environment, I guess an ISO file is not the best choice. You can simply ex extract this and use it. For example, this German Hetzner provider is uh, quite strange to me because, you know, he, he first loads like PXE Linux, then PXE Linux loads some kind of a CD-ROM emulation software, and this emulation software reads this ISO file, and this ISO file gets extracted and booted, and so on. The whole boot process takes five minutes or six minutes, and I, I was asked asking them, why don't they put simply in this TFTP root the, the, the image itself? Yeah, so, so, so that's when they pick like uh, MFSBSD or, or the FreeBSD rescue system that uh, the MFSBSD will start. And they said, well, we use everything with this ISO system and so on. Okay, you know, big companies. Uh, yeah, um, on my blog, blog.vxsk, you can, you can find a tutorial how to, uh, how to create a network boot with uh, MFSBSD. Yeah, so there are all the steps necessary to install a network boot server that uh, deploys MFBSD for many servers. So you can then boot MFSBSD from this network. For example, I have like 50 servers at a server provider and I have one single server that provides, uh, provides MFSBSD boot environment for all of them. And for example, when I'm installing a new server, I simply tell him boot from network. He boots automatically MFSBSD because boots, the boot protocol tells him. And this tutorial also explains how to combine it with Pegs Linux. That means you have a menu and in in this menu you can pick several choices. So you can like have MFSBSD just as the one choice of the Pixel Linux boot menu, and then for example Linux installation remote or something as a second choice. So you can really have a multi-operating system, so it's a, such a hybrid system in your deployment in a school or server farm or any, any, other, any other place where it's appropriate. Okay, good, so that would be it.